the Renaissance film is obviously about the Renaissance tour. Uh, it is part concert film, part travelogue of what it takes to make the Renaissance tour. Uh, one of the things that she emphasizes in the voiceover and the narration of this film is she wanted to display exactly how much labor it took to have a tour of this scale happen. This is four years in the making. You see crew members doing crew member things, lighting people doing lighting things, uh, gaffers gaffing, yeah. I've got to assume. Yeah. I don't know what a gaffer does, but I've got to assume at least one of them's in there. Doing she rattles with. off every job Jobs, on the tour. Like all the credits at the end, yeah. she's just doing a uh, a reading of those names. Um, this is the first Beyonce tour of this scale in many years. Renaissance as an album is a very dance music forward album. You're seeing a lot of that exuberance on stage. I was actually low-key surprised not to see more of it in the crowd, especially if we're coming back from, uh, if we're we're obviously living in the immediate shadow of the Taylor Swift Eras Tour uh, film, and you see a tremendous amount of crowd work. I thought there was more crowd in Renaissance, uh, way more than in the Eras But Tour I didn't film. get the sense, of they, they mostly seemed accents to what was happening with the rest of the film. To me, I didn't feel like you got... You, you wanted to live in the crowd more? See, I, wanted, I wanted to see more characters You had Cardi crowd. B during the Mute Challenge. Very... <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but I was expecting a little... I think in those moments, I was expecting the crowd to be a little bit more present. Huh. I did not feel this at all. I thought, mm -hmm. especially after Eras Tour, in which I think I said on this show that I wanted a little bit more crowd because mm -hmm. I found those moments to be really moving. Mm -hmm. And I felt sated in that respect from Renaissance. To me, the hits on the crowd were very quick. They were quick. And they felt gestural and a little symbolic. Hmm. Because of that. Okay. Um, the music, I was consistently struck, and again, I think this is what Beyonce wants you to take away from this film. The labor attached to the performance of the songs and the labor attached to the execution of the stage show. Yes. I'm consistently struck in this movie by how close the cameras are. In Aerosaur, there are moments where I'm like, like camera really just... They're trying to capture the scale of a stadium. That's not what's happening in this film. What's happening is the camera is like as close as I am to you. The camera really wants to communicate the sweat, the muscle. I remember this is a very like niche Beyonce online controversy from a few years ago. But do you remember like BuzzFeed? I don't think this is niche. I is think it this not is niche? major. You yeah. know the one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the thing where BuzzFeed posted like 40 photos of Beyonce from some concert and they were all on wire services, like they were all available, but she has a lot of- They were all the imperfect photos. Yes, but there are a lot of like strong facial expressions, uh, you know, contorted facial expressions and- Like a weird snarl, like a, 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 in the middle of saying something. Like... But, but also it's like, I remember looking at those photos and being like, this is a person who is a working hard. And obviously, if you're working hard, not every still photo of you is going to capture a perfect, flawless... Uh, Her team did not take it that way. Correct. But I felt the... I remember at the time being like, this actually shows just how hard Beyonce is working. And then I was struck in this film, you don't think. I had the exact thought during the movie. Yes. I thought... I see the cuts where they're avoiding the BuzzFeed photos. Yes, but I do think there were moments where there's up close and you see her doing like there's never moments. never anything less than perfect. I, I mm, okay, that's an interesting way. It's I, I took it as they were conceding a little bit more than maybe that they would have previously five it. to ten years ago. I didn't feel it, and oh, I think this gets. But I think this gets at a larger issue, which is when the film is over, cutting to the end. You see written, directed, and performed or produced by Beyonce. Uh, yeah. It's a whatever. They give her credit for three things. Mm -hmm. But she is in charge of this movie. Mm -hmm. She directed this film. Taylor Swift did not direct Eras Tour film, but she's in charge of the Eras Tour film. Like, so what I'm <laughs> saying is like even a 12-year-old director. <laughs> <laughs> even in the appearance of revealing the appearance of, of imperfection, of yeah. vulnerability, whatever. And this is very Beyonce. It's like she's telling you all the time how much she's showing you. She's not showing you all that much, ultimately. 
It's only by comparison. Yes. It's only by comparison. To previous Beyonce things. Yes. And um, we'll get into this in a minute, but, you know, Wesley also sort of draws a little bit of a link to Madonna's Truth or Dare, um, which I spent some time last night and earlier today catching up on, which I haven't seen in a few years, the last time. The last time we saw a movie together. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. The first and last last time we saw a movie together before yesterday evening at the Renaissance Was a Truth or Dare screening at Metrograph. An anniversary when they reprinted it or whatever a couple years back. Anyone that comes into this insane atmosphere, when they come into your dressing room, when they come wherever you are, they feel crazy. I'm making this movie because I'm not afraid of the truth. Truth or dare, Madonna? Dare. And it is the music documentary. It's the Ne Plus Ultra. If that exact film came out today, it would be hailed as a vanguard film. The fact that it came out in 1992 or whatever, or 91, unthinkable. Uh, everything that people have done in, in, in its wake as far as like, revealing tour documentaries or even something like the Metallica, some kind of monster or whatever, like anything with a pop star pretending towards transparency and vulnerability is pale in comparison to that film. And that goes to the point that I was just making because that film is directed by somebody who is not Madonna. Like there is a documentarian Mm -hmm. there. A shooter. (laughs) Yes. To figure out. What really goes on behind the scenes right. of a Madonna tour, mm-hmm. and they find it, and it's ugly often. Yes. There are some things in that movie that are distasteful, both from Madonna, from others, done to her, done by her. Absolutely. Like, that is real journalism, in a way. Yeah. In, in a way that not all documentary is. No. And um, so if you watch uh, the Renaissance tour film with that in mind, it doesn't necessarily reveal that much. The thing that's often revealed in the behind the scenes footage is just how in control Beyonce is. Now, again, I'm very struck by those scenes where a lighting guy says, oh, no such lighting thing exists. And she's like, well, I Googled it basically. And it does. And like <laughs> the, the the stage guy is like, yeah, I don't know that curve. And she's like, well, I was researching 30 foot yada yas. I mean, that's pretty great. And yeah. also just imagine being the guy who didn't do the homework, who then goes to get and gets rinsed by Beyonce on camera that now lives forever. Like RIP to y'all. Like that's, I feel bad for it. But y'all. honestly an honor, you know, to be I, rinsed I, by I, Beyonce I would hope they view camera. it that way. I would <laughs> hope they view it that way. But it's like, it's embarrassing for you and your families, respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> just letting you know. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit structurally about the film because we're yeah. talking about these behind the scenes vignettes and they basically, there's, Set list, vignette, set list, behind the uh, scenes, set list, behind the scenes. Yes. And it's cutting in and out yes. of various lengths. Sometimes mm-hmm. you get a long run of songs. Sometimes you get a shorter run yeah, of songs. Yeah, I would songs. say like the front part of the film is more vignettes uh, balance, and the balance on the back end is, is fewer vignettes. The one that really worked for me is the very first one, which is about the scale of the tour and about the people it takes to put it on. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, was instantly you get a counterpoint to what Era's tour film was doing. Era's tour film is all in the show. Mm-hmm. It wants you to feel like you are at the concert. You're seeing super. You're getting a lot of super close-ups of Taylor, a lot of wide of the the football stadiums mm-hmm. that she's playing in, but you never see any seams it's all music it's mm-hmm. all show it's all song no voiceover n- no nothing whereas this i feel like doesn't want you to be in one moment it wants you to be in every moment mm-hmm. and the other way you see that along with the you know 160 uh trucks that it takes to move the beyonce tour around mm-hmm. the country and then ev- eventually around the world um but you also see it in the outfit changes uh yeah, because oh, yeah. she wore multiple costumes for the same performance and often in the song that you're hearing, you're seeing her wearing all the different fits Mm -hmm. that she wore for that song throughout the tour. So to me, it was like a longitudinal And they filmed the entire tour, it seems, whereas the Taylor show is they filmed those set of Los Angeles shows. Yes. So it's interesting to me that while the Taylor 
tour is the one that is supposed to be ranging across her whole catalog, but the movie is focused in one moment, and the Renaissance film is supposed to be focused on this one album, and you barely get any other songs. Uh, and yet it's it's like a longitudinal study of the tour, you know, so those those I thought those were interesting choices from each of them. 